Hey everybody, it's been quite some time since I've seen you. However, I wanted to do this quick review of the newest Paul Thomas Anderson film, Phantom Thread, starring Daniel Day-Lewis. I just saw this for the first time last night. It's finally been wide released. Thank goodness, I know it came out last year. But uh, here we are. Here we are, we have it finally, officially. It's, it's officially here in Springfield, at least where I'm at. And boy oh boy was I really pleased and, and excited to see this movie. So today I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the plot. I'm not really going to get too much into it because I don't want to give anything away. This ending even has some kind of twist to it that I really enjoy. And also some of my pros, my cons, and what I really think of this movie overall. So we have Daniel Day-Lewis who is this fashion designer. This is in the 1950s. He's Reynold Woodcock. He's really, really famous apparently during this time period. He's with his sister Cyril who is just pretty much the one who takes care of him and all the other affairs around going on with his with his day-to-day -day kind of routine. He is very uh, involved and invested in his work and honestly a lot of his social interactions with, with other women and other people really just kind of go awry all the time until he meets this one girl. Until he meets Alma who is this pretty much waitress from this little uh, cafe that he meets who he takes an interest in, wants to start some kind of relationship. However, he's very hesitant and also she is as well. It's a very strange relationship and that's where the, the story kind of evolves into something else. It's back and forth between Alma and Mr. Woodcock, uh, Reynold, Reynolds Woodcock, and you see this really, this uneasy tension this entire time and that's what is so amazing about this movie. This movie reminded me a lot of the movie Rebecca. And I'm talking about Alfred Hitchcock's 1940 film, Rebecca. This it had a very similar tone of this estranged kind of relationship that's going on between uh, uh, this rich kind of, um, this male and this female who is pretty much thrust into his world and doesn't really know what to do, think or do about it. Honestly, there's this really strange love going on in this entire world. And that's something I saw a parallel pretty quickly on going on. I also saw some some hints at Amadeus, and I also saw some hints at Barry Lyndon, at least in the set design and the costume, and I loved all those aspects. There was a lot of great uh, things that were added onto this film that reminded me of all these beautiful films that I've just talk talked about. So let me this naturally transition into the pros. This movie was gorgeous. Like I was saying, it's got a lot of um, fantastic long shots, a lot of intimate shots where you can see kind of a blurry um, thing in the in the foreground, but it's kind of focused on it and something else in the background that is keeping your mind uh, kind of attentive to these little details. The the atmosphere of it, the whole thing is very white. It's very white and pink. And you, you can see the entire room is completely white, more or less. Uh, most of the scenes, kind of just in this kind of chateau manner in the 1950s, and you can see this really kind of faint, fuzzy, kind of noisy-looking thing in the background. At least, and I really enjoy that aesthetic uh, about this. And I know this is the first film that P.T. Anderson actually took. I think cinematography uh, personally, and he did it himself, and so it was gorgeously shot. The set design and also the costume designs obviously were fantastic. It, the Oscars were just announced today and I saw that they were up for costume design. I hope they win because they they did blew it out of the water, especially during the time period it was in. Now let's go on from there to the acting. The acting, Daniel Day-Lewis, I mean come on, the man's a legend. This pretend, potentially is going to be his last film, we'll see about that. Phenomenal acting uh, from him, of course, into this character. I, I'm assuming I'm, on set he was this character the entire time. He, he never broke what he was. It almost feels naturally like it was actually closer to himself because I've seen a lot of interviews with Daniel Day-Lewis and it seemed a little bit more like him uh, than some of the other uh, past characters he's played in the past. And I really enjoyed kind of how he, I know he came up with the character, I, I've heard some interviews with uh, Paul Thomas Anderson where he was talking about how they really collaborated with this this entire project and I love that collaboration. The actresses in this film also are phenomenal. The person who plays opposite uh, him, Alma, is a fantastic actress that I have not really heard of but um, she kept up with Daniel Leal was very very well and their estranged relationship really, really worked. So did Cyril, um, pretty much Daniel Day-Lewis's wife in this movie, or wife, 
Daniel Day Lewis's sister, who took care of everything and uh, did all the seamstresses. She took care of all that. The management pretty much took care of his day to day activities and kept him on schedule. On top of the score, the score was Johnny Greenwood is the one who did the score for this, and actually, he's my favorite score. I know they're being nominated again for the Oscars. I actually think this should be nominated for the Oscar because the score was fantastic. It was eerie at some points. It was uh, uplifting at some points. And it just, it fit every scene that was going on. And honestly, I couldn't say it was just more, uh, the marriage between the film and the music worked very, very well. Now, this uh, leads me to the dialogue. The dialogue between all the characters, it's a slow build. It's a fantastic build. There's a lot of things going on back and forth. There's some even some com co comedic bits uh, between some of the characters and it's just honestly a fabulous little thing. But also it leads me into my some of my cons. And some people, this is not my cons for me personally, but I can see potentially cons for other people. The dialogue is what drives this movie. There's not very much action. It's a slow paced movie, but it's, well, it's really uh, paid off uh, when you're watching this movie. The thing about this is some of the times I was watching this movie and I got a little bit bored, but then I got drawn back in very, very quickly. And I honestly think that was a, it was a good thing because, yes, obviously the source material, when I read that Paul Thomas Anderson and, and Daniel Day-Lewis was going to do a 1950s fashion, I wasn't terribly excited. However, uh, I was excited because I love P.T. Anderson and I also love Daniel Day-Lewis. So I, my faith was restored when I watched this movie. It was definitely one of my favorites of 2017. If I could make my top 10 list again, this would definitely be in it. So I want to hear your thoughts on Phantom Thread. I know this is a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but uh, I think I will give this movie a 4 out of 5, potentially a 4.5 out of 5. It's almost near a 5. Honestly, I love this movie. These are the type of movies I really love. I love dramas. It's probably my favorite genre. So I want to hear your thoughts down below on uh, Phantom Thread. Um, give me a like down below. Also, don't forget to comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you next time. I'm not jonesing around.